I'm Chris Pope, and I'm uh, here with another awesome actor in the uh, in the studio with me. This is John Patrick Lowry. Hi, John. Hi, thanks so much for coming. We are super excited to have you here. Well, it's been just a pleasure. I mean, the writing's great. I've had a great time today. So yeah. awesome. And well, I, I, you know, we this this whole the whole week we've been here, we've had some phenomenal voice actors, and it just. As far as I'm concerned, it just keeps getting better and better and better. Oh, so, how nice of you to say. Well, <laughs> so why don't you tell a little bit, uh, everybody a little bit about your background. Uh, uh, how did you get into voice acting and singing and all this stuff that you do? Well, I mean, I started out as a, as a, well, I started out as a bass. When I was born in Honolulu, Hawaii, at Tripler Army Hospital, the nurses called me the B-29 because I cried two octaves lower than all the other babies. So my voice never changed. In first grade, they made me the narrator of the Christmas pageant because, and I quote, he sounds just like Walter Cronkite. So, so that's just, that was there. I can see that. <laughs> and, uh, but then I was very much interested in music. Uh, my, my father played the guitar, the harmonica, the piano, and the trombone. And I started trombone when I was in fourth grade. And then in seventh grade, found out that the trombone the trombone doesn't get you any dates until I took up the guitar. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and uh, and now I play flute and keyboards and all kinds of things. But uh, I went to Indiana University uh, to study composition, and that's what my degrees are in. But I, I like to say that I'm the only person I ever know who got into acting because the pay was better and the work was steadier. <laughs> because coming from a composer and a, and a jazz fusion guitarist, anything is better than steadier. <laughs> Um, but I, I got a job of playing guitar and banjo in the pit orchestra of a European tour of a Broadway show, and Ellen McLean, who is now my wife, was in the cast. And we started work, talking about acting, we fell in love, we got married, and all this kind of stuff. And uh, uh, lots of things were happening in my life, and one thing led to another, and I started acting for a living instead of primarily being a musician. Um, we moved out to Seattle in 1989, and uh, while I was working on my doctorate in composition, uh, both Ellen and I were uh, DJs on the local NPR station. And that's really the first time that I did any voice work, um, per se. I uh, did some, some commercials for them. We got out to Seattle and I got a, an agent and started doing, you know, I mean, KFC commercials and all kinds of weird little stuff. And uh, then in, uh, I think it was 95, uh, Sierra Online and Humongous and some of the other early game companies uh, were up in Seattle and they started sending out auditions to all the agents in town and so I auditioned along with all the other actors in town and I started landing these gigs in voice games and I did Betrayal at Antara and Spy Fox Breakfast Cereal and oh, uh, the Total Annihilation, Championship Bass Fishing, <laughs> uh, SWAT 2, and then I got into No One Lives Forever 1 and 2 and The Suffering 1 and 2 and uh, started working for Valve around 2000 on, uh, on uh, Half-Life 2. And, and they hired me and Ellen, and they didn't know that we were married at the time. And then they hired me for the sniper in Team Fortress 2, and Ellen as the announcer for Team Fortress 2, and they still didn't know we were married. Until finally one day, they booked us both on the same day, right after one another, and Ellen came in first. She said, oh, you're gonna be working with my husband next. <laughs> And they went, who? And so that's when they found out we were married. And they thought that was so funny that when they did uh, uh, Left for Dead, yeah. they had to have us come in at the end of the game as the bickering married couple right. in the houseboat. So, <laughs> so, so that was great. And so, so that's kind of how I got to be a, a voice actor in video games. Was first I became an actor doing theater, and uh, and then you know I just started getting getting gigs from my agent. Oh, that's awesome. Now, uh, you and I had had a conversation offline about this, but I think it'd be interesting to bring it up. Uh, mm -hmm. How has things changed in the studio? You were saying that over the years, uh, you get a lot more direction out of the game game directors now than you did well, back in the day. Well, of course, I mean, you know, when, when games started first being made, I mean, they were made by, you know, young kids who liked to draw mazes and stuff like that and were good at coding. And they had no idea what to do with actors, so they just wrote a bunch of lines and figured that actors would just know how to say them. Right. And uh, when I went in for Betrayal at Antara, I remember a couple funny things happened. One thing was Betrayal at Antara looked like it was maybe medieval England, you know, mm -hmm. like half-timbered houses and stuff like that. And so mm -hmm. I thought, well, maybe I'll do like a Sean Connery thing on my audition. And I got the gig, and I went out to the studio, and the guy said, yeah, we really like that Sean Connery thing you did, you know, that Welsh thing. And of course, I didn't have the 
the heart to tell them that Sean Connery is Scottish, not Welsh. <laughs> but, uh, but be that as it may, I started saying these lines, and I kept having to ask them, who am I talking to? Why am I saying this stuff? Because right. it, really, it really makes a difference. I mean, you can write the word W-H-A-T question mark, and it could be, what? Or what? Or all kinds of things, right, depending on what's right. going on. Um, and so, but the writers weren't even in the studio. And they'd have to call up the writer on the phone and uh, say, what's going on here? The guy, the actor wants to know. And so they'd tell me, and so I'd say the line. And I finally got to this one line where I just say, goodbye, son. And I say, so why am I saying goodbye to him? It makes a difference. So I called up the writer and find out. They get back to me and say, well, uh, this is where the game branches. The, your son is either going to go to the store and be right back, or he's going to go through this trans-dimensional portal and go to another universe and never going to see him again. So could you say it so it worked either way? And so and I said, goodbye, son. And, you know, that was, that was good enough for him. But, but really, very, very quickly, the, the learning curve was very steep. And by the time I was doing No One Lives Forever and uh, The Suffering, the writers were always there. And they were always telling mm-hmm. me what was going on. If I was loud, if I was in a battle. You know, I, early days, I didn't do any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so it, uh, and of course, and the writer was here on this. And he told me exactly what you guys needed. Right. And it makes it very easy for the actor to give the game what the game needs to exactly, be, to be yeah. realistic and immersive. No, awesome. Awesome, man. Well... Uh, I definitely I gotta I gotta get you to do some of your characters for us. Okay. <laughs> so you you know obviously one of the the big ones I know that a lot of people know is from Team Fortress Two the, the sniper. Can the you sniper. give us a little sniper? Sure, sure. Dad, 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 I'm not I'm not a crazed gunman, Dad. I'm an assassin. <laughs> what a difference being one is a job and the other's mental sickness. Dad, 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 Dad pop mum on the phone. So that's the sniper. He's he's a professional, and he throws urine at people. You know, <laughs> as as one does. As you do. Yeah. You know. You know. You go to your job. You throw urine at people. That's right. That's great. <laughs> awesome. Well, you also have uh, you've done like Dota. Can you do some of your Dota? Oh too? yeah, yeah. Actually, it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, last year, uh, people voted my my character Pudge as the character that uh, got the most votes. Um, to, to be enhanced. Mm-hmm. And I like to say I got more votes than Donald Trump did. I got over 36 <laughs> million votes. So that was, that was great. But you know, Pudge is he, he very working class and he, he, he likes to eat the people that he kills. So he says, ah, fresh meat, gonna hook ya. <laughs> he's, kind of, he's my kind of guy, kind of a working class guy. Really needs an orthodontist. He's, uh, you know, and he wears human skin as his clothes. Yeah. It's like that. He's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Well, uh, in 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 our game Space Venture, mm-hmm. you're one of the characters that uh, you're doing for us is Nerb. Yeah, who's another Aussie? Yeah, yeah, he is, but he's he's not the sniper. That's well, that, and that was a challenge for me as, as an actor yeah. you know, to, to do the dialect. But but right. yeah, I mean, the sniper's right here. You know, he talks kind of like this, and uh, you know, Nerb is well, you know, he's very extreme and he's very happy and he's very bouncy and he's got a lot of energy. He does have an Aussie accent, but he's not the same guy. Exactly. Yeah. No. And, and we absolutely loved what you did for us there. Oh, thanks. Thank you. And you also uh, you sang one of the Habanero songs for us. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. And that was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. uh, you guys just came. Hey, so we'd like you to sing the song, and we'd like to, to do this mariachi <laughs> harmony along with it, which was great. And here, was, by the way, we're not going to let you have any, any heads music. up on this. That's right. That's we're right. just going to spring it on you and, <laughs> and hope for the best. And That's why I love man, voice acting. It's you so good. like knocked it out of the park. <laughs> oh, thanks, I mean, man, we had we had Rob Paulson doing uh, doing a part. We had uh, Jason Charles Miller doing a part. But you came in here with this like bass voice, this booming bass voice that no, nobody else offered us. And it's always just, it's always been there. We just loved it. So no, it's like great it's, job it's like that. being the dancer with the longest legs. It's just what I have. <laughs> yeah. You know, I didn't do exactly. anything. It just was there. Yeah, <laughs> just 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 happened. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's awesome, man. Oh, thank you so much for doing that. Sure. Um, so, what are you working on now? Do you have anything you wanna you wanna um, uh, talk about? Uh, well, a couple of exciting things are going on right now. Um, we're uh, Ellen, both Ellen and I are doing another indie game mm-hmm. uh, called The Church in the Darkness, where Ellen and I play cult leaders, mm-hmm. and your job as a player is to go down and rescue your nephew from this cult. And the cool thing about it is you don't know if it's a good cult or a bad cult right. or an in-between cult, and the game is different every time. It starts different, and depending on what you do, it changes whether or not we are insane <laughs> and all this kind of stuff. So it, I, I hope it's going to be a really good game. It's, it's gotten some good press. Sounds really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm definitely going to check it out. And the other thing uh, I'm working on, uh, for, for years I've been involved with a, 
a company called Imagination Theater that makes audio dramas mm -hmm. like the old radio shows in the 30s and 40s, except that they're new, mm -hmm. um, but completely, you know, fully casted, fully scripted, sound effects, music, all that kind of stuff. And I've played Sherlock Holmes for them for years and years and years, and we've done a lot of other things too. But uh, this new project we're working on uh, with my friend Jeff Steitzer is uh, called the Enchanted Story Emporium. And these are audio dramas for children. Mm -hmm. And uh, the one thing that we found out when we were doing our audio dramas for, for the other stories is that sight impaired people really appreciate this work because they get to experience the whole product. They don't need any kind of description or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Everything that anyone gets out of it, they get out of it. Mm -hmm. And so it's very important to them. And so we're, we're looking forward to, to serving that community and getting them entertainment that is, you know, basically made for them. Oh, that's awesome. um, but, it's, but it's made for I mean, anybody who likes to listen to a story, they're going to enjoy these. So we start working on those in a couple, in like next month we start producing oh, That's them, great, so. that's great. And, and you're, a, you're an author too, right? Yes, yes. Uh, I've, uh, so my science fiction novel, Dancing with Eternity, won the Forward First Award for uh, a Best Debut Fiction. Um, two of my uh, audio drama scripts have won uh, Best Script at uh, Moondance. So yeah, I do a lot of writing and it's done well. Uh, Dancing with Eternity has gotten great reviews from, from the people who read it and from the from industry. Uh, and it's groups. on Audible too. And it's, uh, we, audio version. Right, uh, Imagination Theater produced it as an audio book and uh, which is really their version of an audio book which is a complete audio drama. Right. Uh, Ellen and I, Ellen re reads all the female characters, mm -hmm. I narrate and read all the male characters. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of well done for that because it's written in the first person, so the narrator is actually yeah. talking to you. Yeah. But complete with sound effects, you always know when you're in the spaceship or you're in the jungle during the day or the jungle during the night, right. all kinds of things. Right. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, man, thank you so much for coming on with me. And, and thanks again for being in our game. We're really excited to, to have you here. So. It's, you know, there's no more fun way to make a living than being a voice actor. It's just great. So thanks so all much, right, man. man. Thanks.